What's happening? This your boy Lil Peep, man. DSGB. Shout out to Dumb Eye TV. Y'all know how we rocking. Yeah. Hey there, everybody. How your day going? This your boy Gold Bow Shorty, bringing you the latest and the greatest news and information. I need y'all to go ahead, hit that like, comment, and subscribe button before you do anything else. I'm finna bring y'all some brand new content. Just lay around for it. Just chill. Nah, it, it was straight. Dude was, dude was cool as fuck. Dude was um regular, like how we sit and talking mm-hmm. now. Back then it was um keep your head up. Brenda's got a baby. Holler if you hear me. Them, them songs. I seen him a couple of times. I seen him with Keith Murray one time. You, Keith Murray got a story on it. I was there at that story, but I'm not going to tell that story. I, you know, that story stays sealed with me forever. I'm not trying to evaluate his life or get deep into it like that because that's his life and it led him on a certain path. I don't choose to follow that path. I mean, I'm going to follow a different path. And then however I die, I'll die. I mean, hopefully it won't be a violent death. I mean, but that's just life. You you know, you live, you die. You know, it's nothing. It's, it's many of those who I killed just like Tupac. I'm coming back for show, and I love the bag, and everywhere I go, and every episode I've been through, I always felt like I was sharing it, the good times and the bad, with the bag, because, you know, they, they don't want, I felt like whatever I am, the Bay Area has something to do with making me, so if I'm bad, then they have something to do with making me, if I'm good, then they have something to do with making me. Jeez, man, y'all heard that, man, let me play y'all a little bit more of the clip, man, and y'all getting them comments to let me know what y'all think about it, just chill book man you know what i'm saying you, you get a lot of your friends to come and give them free tickets now it look like you got a crew of guys with you man uh zip was rolling in a van up greenly from my neighborhood he called he called zip i guess it was perfect time and he like hey man i'm going to uh i'm going i'm going on my tour the b two. i think he was on the b tour tour it was uh naughty by nature some little, some little ugly dudes, uh, Jodeci. Jodeci, uh, uh, Mary J. Blige, and, uh, and his whole little crew, uh, what's him, Toto, yeah, well, Craig Mack, 112, 112, yeah, and they, you know, they come big and close the show, though. So he called and said, uh, I'm doing a tour, and he like, oh, man, uh, that big CEO dude is out there, is he cool to, Come, all right, man, just give me 50 tickets and I'll, I'll, I'll show up for you, big dog. The thing about Pac was he had an inbred warrior in him, right? And if you saw him, you saw his stature, you know, small frame. He was one of them, like, uh, real strong little niggas in the hood. You know, you, you think, oh, that kid's skinny, I could take him. And get fucked up? Yeah, he was that type. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I think that was one of the things. Because when I was young, I was skinny, but i would give it to niggas. So the point was, Pac was that way. He was very, very intelligent, highly intelligent, but extremely sensitive, conscious, wanted everybody to win, loved our people. He loved people in general, but black people because of the struggle and the plight that we've been through. And he was very aware because he was taught from young he just was like, I'm on a mission. I got to wake motherfuckers up. Like, he, he was really that type conscious. But then adapt to the street very well. Because people don't know, like, you know, he, he was there. So he'd be quick. That's why. Why you think he could play those roles so well? That shit was in him. So people, you know, it, it's, it's a funny thing, man. But, uh, no, nah, it wasn't like that. He'd, he'd, be, he'd be on some wild shit. When he when you, when you when you push that button, then then that warrior come out, and, and that's what a lot of people saw. They saw the warrior, but they didn't know the moments of betrayal. They didn't know the full backstory, all the shit he had gone through. And so my nigga, he would snap off. He snap off crazy. Tell you a funny one. First of all, as time went on, we would just meet and just where we never expect to run into each other at. Right. And he really would, he had that camaraderie spirit. Pac was also, it's, it's, it's a certain type in the hood when we all grew up. Where, and, P, and Pac grew up in the Bronx too. Motherfuckers don't even understand that. They don't even realize that. And um, 
the thing is, there's when you grow up and you're conscious and you're being taught things, I think everybody kind of shares a, fi a similar fiber where you don't like bullies. You don't like bullies because you get a chance to recognize the stronger and the weaker and you see it. And when you're intelligent, you want to protect motherfuckers. And be like, what? Who did that to you? Pac was one of them type motherfuckers. He's fucking this tall, but he'll run up against the biggest of them. And so, but he had that type of thing. Like, it was so funny. Every time I would see him, you like, you good? He was the first person to call me OG. So he's like, yo, you good, OG? He kept saying that, OG, OG. And I was like, fuck, it's an OG. And he was like, original gangster, nigga. And I was like, hey, I like that. You know what I'm saying? But we were funny to each other, like, haphazardly. And one time in particular, when I came out here, I love Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. I just love that shit. I, I could eat that shit every day. And he knew that, and that was my spot. That was his spot. So one day, we were headed to KM, KMEL. It's in San Francisco's power station. And they, they were like, yo, we got a big concert out there. And, you know, rock with y'all. So it was like, we were running around, we were recording, we were doing promo tour. We was just, you know, just moving. We was, you know, we was on Liddy or whatever, whatever. So I was like, fuck that, let's go to Roscoe's before we head out to the, to the Bay Area or whatever. So we go up in Roscoe's. Who's sitting in Roscoe? Park. We like, yo, what up, nigga? We bugging out. And so, all right, we doing our thing. And he was like, where you headed? He said, where y'all going? I said, well, we going to San Francisco. He said, oh, shit, I was getting ready to go to Oakland. I said, word. So he had a couple of his boys with him and all of that. And um, <laughs> so he had a couple of his boys with him. And he was like, yeah, we getting ready to go to Oakland. Y'all going to San Francisco? What's going on in San Francisco? I said, we got this big ass shit. And do -do 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 -do. He was like. Fuck it. I'll roll with y'all. So he was like, bet. So he jumped in the whip. So they got a truck. They had a truck. We jump in the whip. And um, he jumped in with us. Police, we actually did that song together. You know what I'm saying? All in the studio that day. You know what I'm saying? Biggie was there. C's was there. A couple other members from Junior Mafia came uh, by the session. And so we had spent numerous, you know, numerous times around each other. Let me get into nonsense like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's... Yeah, I think he should look out. You know what I'm saying? He, he worth a billion dollars. He should come look out. Come build a, build a basketball gym at our parkers. Do something. You know what I'm saying? Well, ultimately, that was... Uh... The calls, yes, but it was bigger than that, you know, the, the game making or the, as James would say, uh, putting the hand on a, on, a, on a G from another side of the town. Uh, I know that's the position James has always taken for me listening to him. But ultimately, that's what calls Trayvon Lane to go and... Uh, in my opinion, from talking to Trey and knowing how they just get down, speak to his big homies and say, hey, there's a the dude over there that me came up and um, I forget the other guy's name, uh, a little more got into it with, you know, I'm not saying he said that, but that's what he meant, got into it at the Lakewood Mall and uh, trying to take my chain at the mall. Tupac heard that. And took off, showing his being loyal how he is. Everybody want to say two fuck this, two fuck that. I look at two fuck Shakur has been a loyal motherfucker, and he was at the point proving his loyalty to. I'm not even gonna say the mob. I'm gonna say to Trayvon, Shug, Buntry, and um, Nick Bone. Well, say the mob. That's the motherfucking mob right there, right there. Okay. What did I say to mom? Okay. But there were those guys that hung around there. Probably went from the mom. All of those guys that was there. That's correct. And that crowd, you can watch the video. And they were mom. Yeah. Okay. Right. But I know. I think he was really showing his allegiance to them, cause that's who all. That's who we hung around the most. Okay. My opinion. Okay. okay.
everybody in the hood know it. But motherfucker, if you got in tune with somebody and I saw them again, you knew the tension is tension. He should have just took off. <sighs> Could he do that? Let me ask you this, Jay. Being a guy of a stature, the stature that James is, you have a bigger stature, and no disrespect to Trey, than Trey did. And a situation like that has been a little homie. If he would have wanted to start some shit like that, if he would have wanted to start some shit like that, and he did like that, where we were at, I think he would have got disciplined. Is that from a from from, from what standpoint? 